All right, so we're going to talk about wave reflections very quickly here. So we want to know what is going to happen when waves interact with a fixed end or with a boundary, okay? So if we imagine that this is a wave pulse traveling along a medium and it comes to uh, some fixed point, we'll say it's like attached to the wall or anchored to the wall, and the wave is traveling along like this, Here's the velocity, okay, the velocity is in this direction. There will be a reflection. In other words, the input energy will interact with the end, with the with the boundary, and it'll come back out. It'll bounce off of here, okay, and, and travel out the other way. What we're interested to know, though, is what does that reverse pulse look like? And it turns out that when you have a fixed end, by fixed end, I mean that that rope is like tied and there's no movement available that the wave traveling back out the other end is inverted it's flipped okay you may be wondering why should that be so okay and i think the best way to understand why that's true is to think about what happens to the rope as the wave comes by it all right so let's imagine that the rope is made up of a bunch of individual particles like this okay as the wave comes along towards the particles their tendency is to be whipped in an upward direction right so this particle is about to be whipped upwards these ones are all on their way up and then they come back down to the resting position now let's imagine that's fine as long as these are free to move up and down but this last one is fixed to the wall it can't move all right so this becomes a, I guess, uh, an example of Newton's third law in motion, right? The third law, do you remember what the third law is? Well, it's the one that we often call action-reaction. And, you know, you probably notice this when you say, take your hand and slap your desktop really hard. Right. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction would be the way that most people would hear that. And you, you, you feel this if you say, like, slap onto your desk surface, okay? Your hand feels your desk exerting a reverse force on it, right? And it doesn't feel very good. If you slap your desk really hard, you're going to hurt your hand, okay? Um, and really, if you kept your hand still and slapped your hand with the desk, the same thing would happen. Okay, so it's this equal and opposite reaction scenario going on. So this last, you know, ball, when it, you know, when it, when the wave comes and I guess, you know, attempts to whip it in the upward direction, due to action reaction, it can't move, so it exerts a downward force back the other way. It essentially starts a new wave traveling out of it in the opposite or flipped over direction. So you try to whip it up, you can't whip up goes back down the other way. Does that make sense? Okay. The second one that we're going to look at is what happens if, instead of being tied on here, this is just with, say, like a loose loop. So in other words, it can actually, like, move up and down as the wave travels into it. And we call these fixed end reflections. Okay, so up here, this is referring to a fixed end reflection. You also have free end reflections. And in a free end reflection, the wave comes in. This is our point. We'll imagine that there's like a loop around here. Okay. And this is, will move up. So we'll move back down. There'll still be a reflection because we've run out of medium. But the input wave and the output wave will 
be on the same side. Okay. And there is no action reaction scenario here. So it kind of makes more sense that the wave coming out the other end will, will be the same size. Now in, in real life, there's usually some loss of energy as these reflections happen. So the return wave should be a little bit less, um, have a little bit less amplitude than the input wave. But uh, we're more concerned just about general behavior. I'll just wait a second and we'll have a look at what this looks like. So with the, with the non-fixed end, with the free end, the amplitude returns, the reflected wave has the amplitude on the same side, and on the fixed end it's flipped over. The amplitude is inverted. Um, so let's just look at uh, a quick animation that will show this. Oops, that is not what I wanted to show you. Sorry. This is what I wanted to show you. Okay, so here's a fixed end, and here's a free end. So just watch those go by a couple of times. Good. Okay, and then here's just uh, an example of a wave in a spring that we did. So let's see what it looks like in slow-mo. So there's your fixed end and boing and it comes back flipped over okay and notice it reflects back and forth and back and forth that's the energy that's trapped within the spring going back and forth and slowly dissipating in a perfect scenario where there were no friction and no no loss of energy uh, i guess this wave would continue bouncing back and forth really forever but in our world energy gets lost we hear sound there's heat created and so on and that's the end of that